Please pray with me before I offer a message this morning. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Sometimes God really has a great sense of humor. A few weeks ago, the Finance Committee chose Sunday, March 4th to be Consecration Sunday when we would pledge our gifts and our treasures for the upcoming 2018 year, the rest of this year, uh, to God and to dedicate those to the work of the church. And then I opened the Bible and saw that Jesus was turning tables and uh, the money changers were cast out of the temple. And uh, this is one of the most challenging scriptures to talk about when we talk about money and the church. Sometimes I imagine God doubled over with laughter, with tears streaming down his face when he uh, has me preach these kinds of scriptures. But in a way, it's a wonderful invitation because it reminds us of what it is to purely worship and how our worship as a church can sometimes become distracted from the focus that God would have us understand. For the last few weeks, we've been trying to purify ourselves during this Lenten season, asking God's forgiveness, trying to reconcile ourselves with those around us, trying to forgive others as we would ask to be forgiven. Today we look at the spiritual health and the reconciliation of the church itself, or the religious institution, and Jesus goes into the synagogue, excuse me, he goes into the, the great Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and he sees that it has become um, a place of shallow religion, where the money changers exchange money uh, without even remembering that these offerings are meant for God. This is a day that we, we remember why we do what we do, why we give what we give, why we serve as we serve. It's like the young girl who was on a Sunday morning given two quarters by her mother. One of them, her mother said, was to be her allowance for that week. It was for her to keep. The other one was for the offering to the church. She says, this other quarter belongs to God. One is for you and one is for God. So the girl was walking to church and she was tossing one of these quarters in the air and catching it all the way to the church. And she was doing pretty well until she missed and the quarter fell to the ground, rolled off of the sidewalk, over the curb, and into a storm drain, lost forever. And so the girl looked up to heaven and humbly said, God, that was your quarter. <laughs> we sometimes allow our religious practices to become slightly corrupt, a little bit more about ourselves than about God. We can lose our focus like that little girl. And Jesus realized that his whole religion had done this. People had lost focus on why they were supposed to be there. And so he took a whip and chased the money changers out of there. You, we can see this wonderful artwork by Peter Koenig, who um, is a modern artist who brings these stories into a contemporary setting. It's also on the front of your order of service, the bulletin cover this morning. It's, it's quite a striking image where the color of his suit matches the color of these birds, and we're reminded of how uh, Jesus liberates the spirit of the temple from the strange habits that it's gotten into. These doves themselves are important because people during the Passover, during the season of Passover, which the scriptures say they were celebrating at those times, people would come on long pilgrimages with a dove to be sacrificed in the temple. Only the law was that the, any dove to be sacrificed to God was to be unblemished. It could have no missing feathers or little dings in the, in the skin or whatever. So when they got there, of course, after a long trip, a dove in a cage would probably be dinged up pretty badly. And so the temple the temple money changers and animal traders would say, uh, it seems that your dove is slightly blemished. Uh, it's no longer a fitting sacrifice to God. But lucky for you, there's a perfectly uh, healthy, unblemished, temple-certified dove that I will sell you to you for a pretty penny here in the temple. And this kind of business was going on, and it was difficult for the poor especially to complete their pilgrimage to do their sacrifice to God because they might have spent all of their money on that journey, on that pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Jesus' actions are defending 
the poor. Also, there was a, uh, the money changers were exchanging coins because the rule was that you couldn't bring currency with another, with a secular leader's face on it. You had to give currency that belonged to the temple to the temple. So they were there to exchange currency, and that was also happening. And furthermore, this was, if we see an image of the temple uh, on the next slide, we can see that this was all done in that courtyard, that great magnificent courtyard that surrounded the central part of the temple and the Holy of Holies. That was the area where foreigners would be welcome, where outsiders could come and honor God. They weren't allowed like the Jews were into this, the center part of that temple, but they were allowed onto that, that great um, outer courtyard. And all this was happening there. So the one place that the outsiders could come and feel welcome was now turned into a marketplace. And it was hard to even feel that God was present there. there. Many people who were called God-fearers believed in the God of the Jews, though they were not Jewish. And they would make this pilgrimage as well just to check it out. But what they would find is that people seemed more interested in making money than anything else. So Jesus got fed up and he took that cord and he wound three cords together to make a whip, and he chased those animals out, and he overturned tables, and he restored this temple. He cleansed the temple for its original purpose. We're invited this morning to think of our own dedication to God. Has it become something rote? Is it something we just do sitting in the pews, or is it filled with the love of Christ? Is it filled with the service to the poor and to those around us? Does it reflect the true nature of inclusiveness and welcome that Jesus wanted to restore in the temple that day to welcome all people to be in a place of prayer and thanksgiving and praise? Our Old Testament scripture is the Ten Commandments, and it reminds us to keep this focus as well. You shall not make for yourself an idol as those animals had become idols or the unblemished sacrifices or the money that was being exchanged. They became the focus rather than God himself. Or you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. In the name of God, these people were squeezing the poor after they made these long pilgrimages. Sometimes in the name of God, we commit injustices or make life more difficult for those who are in need, or we exclude those who are marginalized. We must return to the true devotion God invites us to have. We must cleanse the temples of our souls and worship in spirit and in truth together. This past week, I was speaking to a mentor pastor named Reverend Steve Petty. He's been helping our church and helping me as a pastor to this church. And uh, we were talking about what it means to do this Consecration Sunday where we dedicate our gifts and our tithes and offerings to God, how we can inspire a good feeling instead of just talking about money or the, the business of the church. He said, it's essential that you remember compassion. Return to the works of compassion in the church. Once we feel that all that we give to is given out of compassion and serves the purpose of God's compassion out in the world, giving will come naturally. It's what we must do. It's what we're inspired to do. He told me about a, a pastor named Lyle Schaller who was once asked, what must we do to increase the giving and generosity of our church? And Reverend Schaller said, you should go on a church mission to serve others. And they said, that's not the answer we were looking for. <laughs> that's an expensive thing. That's expenses instead of income. How does that help us at all? He says, it helps you because it will inspire your church to do what it was always called to do, to serve whom it was called to serve. And when people remember why we serve Christ, how we show his love, his forgiveness, his grace, his service, in this world, they will become more generous naturally. I said, it's funny that you say that because ever since we hired this Pastor Nicole Armstrong, she's been saying, I want to go on a mission trip to El Salvador or to some place in Latin America. And I've said, that sounds like craziness. We have no time for that. We, have, we don't have the money for that. And he said, no, Steve Petty said, no, she's right. And 
you need to listen to her. This will change your church. This will change your own life. This will change your outlook. And people will begin to say, that church goes to Latin America and serves the poor. That church serves the community in Anaheim in so many ways. And soon people will want to be here because they want to be a part of what God is doing. Amen? This morning we look to offer all that we are, not just a part. We give ourselves to the mission and the service of Christ and for his church. I would like to remind us of the mission statement of our church. It was adopted several years ago, but it's still very powerful. Reach out, serve, and invite with the love of Jesus Christ. And we notice we take the first steps. We reach out and serve. And once we've done our part, we invite with the love of Jesus Christ. In this spirit, in this generosity, we give our talents, our time, our treasures, all that we are for the sake of God's kingdom, justice, and joy. This morning, following the sermon, we will hear from our minister of music as he shares his gifts. I'd like to invite him to come forward. Um, during the last Sundays of Lent, the remainder of this season, we will sing this Psalm 5 each Sunday so that we might remember it. And John offers his music with joy. He offers uh, his gifts of guitar playing and song. I invite us to learn these words, to sing them along, to memorize them in the weeks ahead so that we might remember to give our hearts to others and to God for the sake of God's kingdom. Amen.